Let's paint several little happy NFTs and push. Look at there. <sighs> mm. There. Ethereum. The land of happy little NFTs. <laughs> Welcome back, hard forkers. We're here with uh, Zach from Mintable. Welcome along, Zach. Hey, thanks for having me. Johnny Gonza and Stefano. Welcome back, guys. I'm sure the two of you are very eager to, uh, what's to have a chat. What's up, what's up? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so Zach, we'll let you kick it off. Do you want to uh, give us a... Give us the elevator pitch about uh, Mintable. Uh, yeah, well, Mintable is a NFT marketplace, right? We started in 2018 as a, uh, a tool, a creating platform for you to create NFTs. Uh, we released some really cool technology that kind of pushed the space forward, and we're trying to do that again, right? So what we're releasing here at the end of the month is a, we call it a next generation NFT marketplace, which is kind of, uh, kind of weird because it's actually taking things that you're used to from like e-commerce websites, Amazon, Etsy, Lazada, uh, and it puts them into crypto with NFTs, right? Um, so it's coming out at the end of the month, uh, end of November. And when that happens, uh, we think that, you know, we're going to see a big change in the ecosystem again. Um, you know, from when we started in 2018, we kind of pushed the space forward. We released all these features like batch minting uh, and a managing tool, uh, and that pushed the space forward. And now uh, what we're doing now is even even more impactful than what we did back then. So it's going to be pretty cool. Awesome. So, I mean, who, who is Mintable for? Tell, tell us about your audience. Who, who should know about you? Uh, Mintable is for content creators and then collectors, right? So anyone who wants to buy an NFT, uh, which a lot of people don't think that they're a collector, right? But if you buy a, you know, a song before, I know most of us download them now or, you know, don't pay for them. Uh, but if you ever bought something from someone that you're a follower of, like say if there's a, a creator that you follow or that you like, whether it be a musician or on YouTube, um, you could potentially be using Mintable to buy those NFTs because the creators, which is the, the main category of users, they're going to go on and they're going to create their song or their you know private video or their uh, artwork as an NFT. And then only the person who bought it can access that, right? And so when they access it, you know, you know, you buy it, you get the video, the song, the artwork, uh, and then you could also trade it like a normal NFT to resell it. Um, so the two demographics are essentially going to be creators and collectors, but the collectors is very broad. It's whoever, uh, whoever buys things from, uh, from content creators. Awesome. So you've got uh, both content creators and collectors on, on, on the show with you tonight, uh, Zach. So Mr. Gonzo, I'll throw it over to you first as a, uh, both a, a creator and a collector. So any questions for Zach? Ooh, uh, no, I mean, I just was reading over the, the last Medium article and it all sounds really cool. You know, I like all that stuff you're talking about with the, the DAOs and it's really smart to make it run by NFTs instead of, uh, you know, ERC-20s. It was cool. This, um, yeah, like uh, the badge thing, you know, like, you know, you have your prestige with each each NFT and it can be added to and, and plus that's... You know, you've heard, heard talk of that for the last, you know, six months, eight months. Everybody's talking about doing it. And it's cool to see it actually coming out now. I'm excited. And then, you know, like you were talking about songs. I have a graphic novel, you know, that I printed myself, self-published. It's like 180 pages of content. And I've been thinking about how I can turn that into an NFT. You know? So either in editions or I'm not sure if I should make each page separate or if it should be a PDF or... And the three gig uh, limit, that's amazing, you know, because one of the other guys we had on, Vesa, he's a, a digital traditional artist. You know, he's got these massive paintings, you know, you, you take high res photos and then it all has to be compressed down to like 50 megs, right? And especially if you start doing mu um, music and uh, movement, it's, it's really quite limiting, right? So right. one of the amazing things about those big paintings is that like, whoa, you can zoom in and get all this detail, right? So you got like an 8,000, 10,000 pixel image and you can like all the detail and all the cool stuff the artist has put in there, you can actually see it instead of just like, oh, here's this widescreen or it's like compressed down on your phone, right? Like it's so, I see the potential there. There's like, oh, all these tools that everybody's been waiting for. And it just happens so fast in crypto, man. I can't believe it. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, most industries, you talk about these innovations in like two, three years down the road, it happens. But in crypto, it's like someone thought of it. Six months later, someone's doing it. You know, yeah. So it's really. I wouldn't. Fun. I wish it was fast, man. I wouldn't say it yeah, was. Well, for us. We've been working on this for over a year now, and it's uh, it's kind of a uh, kind of a bummer actually. We wanted to launch last December, and here it is, oh, right. almost December, right? And uh, it's because 
you know, we've been, we've been building, changing all the different things. To touch on some of the things you said, um, I don't know if any of the listeners are even going to, you know, they probably didn't read the article. Uh, but you mentioned like a DAO, right? The DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization, right? A smart contract that runs an organization. Um, and normally they have an ERC-20, a normal token that runs a DAO to vote on things. Uh, we replace that with an NFT, right? NFT being kind of like a, a badge or, um, you know, an ID card. Um, and that's, that's a huge thing because it's never been done before. Right. And I also wanted to touch on, you mentioned like three gigabytes. So we have private files so people can upload private files and then people can download them if they, you know, paid for the NFT and own it. Um, and this is something that we don't have anywhere on, you know, any of the NFT platforms. Mm -hmm. um, and so there's places like Rarible and OpenSea and they do have a file size limit of like, you know, 50 megabytes, I think for Rarible and OpenSea, I think is a little bit less, I think 25 or 20. Um, 50 and now. Oh, is it? It's 50 now? Yeah. I just um, the, one for 50. Yeah, and it's like if you want high quality art or high quality content, 50 megabytes is so hard to get. Um, so I was like, you know what, three gigabytes. I don't think anyone's going to use three gigabytes, but uh, he'll probably he'll probably bite me in my ass, right? <laughs> yeah. Challenge accepted. Yeah. <laughs> Challenge well, you accepted. can upload you can upload any file. So you can upload a zip file that oh, you really? just jam full of anything to to you know fill with three gigs. Um, so yeah, and we also didn't want to limit it to only images or only videos. So any any file that's on your computer is accepted. Uh, and then we, we scan every file for virus because you know, you're a crypto user and you're gonna download something. That's a huge risk, right? And so we use state-of-the-art uh, virus scanning technology it also doesn't see any of your content. So your content's never accessed. Um, and so that's really important. Um, and we've got a ton of other features too. I don't know if you saw the one we just put out today, uh, but we highlighted our messaging system and our advertising system. Uh, and these are all really important as well for converting your sales. Right now that's a problem with the NFT space. There's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of chiefs and no Indians, right? You have a lot of sellers and it's very hard to convert a buyer over. Um, and we just, the current marketplaces don't have tools for that. They don't, it's, it's weird, right? Yeah, it's hard to and find it, stuff and like, you know, you gotta have like the exact link for the, like the, the token address right, or right. it's really hard just to like shop you know, and 90 percent of NFT sales are all via direct links from someone on Twitter saying, "Hey, here's my link, buy it directly." Right? They yeah. never go and browse or you know, like look at the marketplace like you would on any other e-commerce marketplace. And NFTs are an e-commerce transaction. When you yeah. buy an NFT, it's an impulse buy, right? You don't you don't say and contemplate. Well, some people do, but you don't contemplate it for a month and say, "Should I really buy this item? Do I need this new item in my house?" You know, it's not like that. It's an impulse buy. Um, and so we built our marketplace with all this in mind, like a normal e-commerce platform to, um, provide the tools that people need. Right. Like, did you want to do a, a screen share of, uh, of the platform for us? And, uh... Yeah. Yes, I can. Uh, give me a second to share my screen. No problem. Uh, Stefano, yeah, like any, any comments while Zach's bringing that up? Um, well, I guess that we can wait for the the sharing <laughs> of the platform, and then like we can maybe ask a maybe, of questions. maybe around the DAO, which obviously is a space you know quite a bit about. Well, I I agree on the idea per se. Like having NFTs representing like a ID or like representing like parts of a DAO is actually a concept that, that can work uh, absolutely fine. To, to give you an example, in countries like Malta, for example, the shares of a company are actually having a unique number. So traditionally, people always think that like when you're transferring a share, um, you know, it doesn't matter who gets that. You have 100 shares of a company and you just like share them, uh, transfer that and so on. But in specific countries, like every share has a unique number. So when you're transferring like shares number five, uh, you are actually transferring specifically that share, which with NFTs would kind of like work pretty well on that uh, because you can have like every single piece uh, with a unique number per se. Um, does that, I don't know in terms of like the innovation things is a cool gimmicking thing, to be honest. Like I, I really like that, you know, you can like display all the different like pieces of DAOs that you own and so on. Uh, what I'm seeing is actually like from a legal stand is that countries that are adopting, adopting that model are kind of switching on having every share to be like completely unique. And so going more into the ERC20 approach on that where like there is not that unique identity. 
However, having a model like that doesn't doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It's actually like the, the two things, the two models can totally coexist. So I, I think it's nice, to be honest. Okay, Zach, uh, show us around. Yeah, you can see my profile right here. Is this a beta? Like, oh, it's not open, right? Not yet. Yeah, no, it's not. It's not live yet. So it's coming out at the end of the month. So there may, there may be some bugs here that we encounter along the way, and uh, hopefully, hopefully not because I'll have to go fix them. Uh, but <clears throat> most of it's done. We're you know we're on track to launch at the end of the month, so about 14 days from now. Uh, you should you can see my profile, right? Spader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So this is just like your profile page in your account, right? And I wanted to show this off first just to kind of give you an idea of. Um, kind of what you're going to be using a, a marketplace for and how it's familiar to a normal marketplace, right? So, you know, you know here, here's a store of mine where I've created, you know, a smart contract. I've got uh, NFTs in these smart contracts. You know, some of them have been sold. So, so you know, they're no longer mine. Um, some of them are listed for sale. Some are expired, right? Um, and of course, all this is dummy information, right? I just, I'm testing things. So like email test, right? So don't look at, don't look at the titles and stuff like that. Um, but you can go through and you can see, you know, uh, here's a store, um, you know, here's an item right here. If I want to click on this, you know, I, it will go and look at the listing. Um, but something that's really important too, on every marketplace, you have a way to see, you know, how much have you made and how did you make it? Who purchased it? Right. So this would be like your earnings. Uh, maybe I want to see my orders because I'm a buyer and I'm not a seller. Although most people are going to be selling and buying, right. You buy an item and then you sell it. And so say I, I, you know, I bought this NFT right here, a uh, printable token, right? And I want to download it. Uh, now I want to get this, um, you know, zip file that's attached to it or the high resolution artwork or the, the song that's attached to it, right? And I just go through here and I can verify using a blockchain that I'm the current owner of it and then it will download it. Um, so when you're browsing the marketplace, that's your profile. And when you're browsing the marketplace as a buyer, you know, I think it's, it's this is very similar to what you see on an e-commerce platform, right? You have all your categories, shoes, clothing, you know, outdoor items kind of thing. Um, you have some additional uh, options, some filters. Uh, you can sort it by different things. Uh, and then, of course, you know, you can see your content, right? So if I want to look only for art, right, I can filter everything by art. And I can say, hey, you know, this is, uh, this is that printable token. Um, so let's go look at that. I bought one of them, and I believe there's uh, three left, right? There's only three left of these to be sold. And I can, I can see everything I need to see here. And it's not the repeat information that you're used to on other marketplaces. If this was a crypto kitty, it would say crypto kitty number 5,400, right? It would say, for I don't think there's a subtitle on other places. Um, so it would just be crypto kitty 5,400. And the description for your item is the same for every item. It says crypto kitties is a game that was pioneered in 2017, blah, 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 right? And that doesn't allow for you to talk to the buyer if you're the seller. You don't get to talk to the buyer and say, hey, you need to buy this NFT because here's why. Look at this description. I've got you know all the information you need right here. It says what's attached to it because there's a downloadable file over here, right? Uh, and then you can easily just buy it. I go through and I can click proceed to pay. And I don't know if you'll see my MetaMask pop up, um, but MetaMask will pop up. You submit a transaction and boom, now it's done, right? There's my, my receipt that I can see in the blockchain and I can go view it in my profile. And um, when we look, you see right here, it's pending, transaction hasn't been processed, right? Um, this is my token. Here's the information that was there. And, you know, that's that's the experience right there. It's super simple, super easy. You don't have to wrap your ether. You don't have to, you know, go through lengthy kind of connection things um, for your wallet and stuff. It's very simple. And for the sellers, if they want to say, you know, they want to start selling, they want to create a store. It's so simple, too. It's, it's what you're used to when you go on Amazon or Etsy and you're creating a store on Etsy, right? You put in, what's the name of my store, right? My store. And, uh, and I can say, I'm going to be selling collectible items here. And this is where I sell collectible items, right? I can put in some tags so that people can find my store and they can search for it, right? So this okay. is going to be... Totally yeah. missing from current marketplaces, right? <laughs> well, there's, there's, and there's so much more. Look at this description, right? So this is what I was just showing you description. Now, I, I, of course, just put spam when I'm testing because I don't want to write something crazy. But if you're actually selling something, you're going to say that this is my rare one out of one. Right. I'm going to upload, um, you know, a, a YouTube video in here so you can see a YouTube video. If it was like multimedia content and you want to attach a YouTube video, you have the complete flexi flexibility here to basically make like a blog article. Right. It's everything you're used to 
for writing content online. And you can fill this out and the person will be able to see it when they're browsing and looking at this, right? Um, so, you know, I upload whatever file I want to upload here as my image for my store. Uh, and then do you care about decentralization? Because if you do, you can directly do IPFS. If you have some project and you want to do it on your own server so you can control the metadata, maybe it's a game um, or like a DeFi project, you can host it on your own server. Um, and if you don't care, you can just host it on Mintable. And then here's the kicker, right? You were mentioning that you have an animated uh, book, right? Uh, you know, a physical book that you wanted to do and it's like a hundred and something pages. Uh, and you didn't know, like, should I make each individual token? So when we launched in 2018, we were the first to do batch printing. We kind of created it um, and we pushed it out there for everyone to use and, and some other marketplaces use it now. Uh, we have spent months redoing the entire smart contract for 721 because it's not conducive to batch printing a lot in a single transaction. So the limit was actually 40 tokens in one transaction. And you would fill up the entire block. It would be like 8 million gas. So you'd be paying like $200 in fees just to do 40 tokens. So after months of redoing everything, we now can do 2,000 tokens in a single transaction. So 2,000 unique NFTs in a single transaction, and it'll be like $100, right? If you want to do 50 tokens, it's like $5 transaction fee, right? It's the same just to, to mint one token as it is to mint 50 tokens. And they're all unique. So for your book, if you have 160 pages, you can make each page 10 times and there would only be 1,600 um, 1600 tokens. And you can do that in a single transaction. And then of course you set your royalty amount, right? So whatever royalty amount you wanna accept. Um, and we're gonna go through and I'm just gonna submit this transaction, it's super simple. Um, so right now it's gonna pop up and send me my transaction in my wallet. And if you use this on your phone, it's gonna you know, just pop up on your phone just like any other ones. And I've just submitted my transaction. And boom, my store has been created. So now I can go ahead and mint a token under my store, right? So what I just did is I deployed my smart contract. I've got all the settings on it that I just uh, went through. And now that store is live on the blockchain forever. And I own that smart contract. It's completely mine. Uh, Mintable has no control over it, no access to it. You're the owner of it and you can do with it whatever you want. It works on every other NFT marketplace as well. So um, <clears throat> I want to go mint. And I believe, what did I call that? Um, what was the name of that store? Uh, I don't know. Let me, uh, I, think, I think my transaction just went through, so I need to refresh the page for it to appear. Uh, so, see, I just connected my wallet like that. Super simple. Um, oh, my store, right? So now I can go through and I can actually mint. And if I want to batch mint 2,000 tokens, boom, right here, see, token one out of 2,000. Now, here's the downside. If you're going to list 2,000 items for sale on Etsy or Amazon, you got to fill out, you know, 2,000 fields of information to say what your items are, right? So that that is kind of a process, and you would have to do that if you wanted each one to be a different, um, you know, a different name for your listing or something like that. But we did make a way to clone tokens. So if maybe you only want to do 2,000 copies or 50 copies or 100 copies of one NFT to do like a series. Uh, then you could do that really easy. You press clone, you only fill it out once, and then it'll make you 2,000 in that single transaction. Uh, and you can see you can upload your private file right here, right? So it could be any file. Uh, it's a three gigabyte size limit. Uh, and then we have native support for uh, 3D files as well. Mm -hmm. So we, yeah, we don't actually, I don't have any 3D files listed for sale right now, but if I did, um, well, here, here's what we'll do. I'll just, I won't batch mint this, and I'll just do a 3D file just to show how easy it is. Uh, and you can see right here, I'm going through, and this is what I mean by spam. I just uh, put in random stuff. Let me find us a 3D file. Um, and so one of the things too is like, if I'm doing a 3D file, I can put all the assets and everything inside the private file. And so you'll be able to interact with the 3D file. Um, and you'll also be able to, um, you know, download all the things to recreate that in say Blender or, you know, some other game that you're doing. Um, and this is, you know, my 3D file. And so what I'm gonna show you is my 3D file and this file is dope. Uh, just to show some of the things, you get a downloadable zip, blah, 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 right? And uh, I wanna show you like how important a good description is uh, when you make something because people are gonna see this exactly as you type it. Um, one more thing is we, we allow you to transfer copyright, which is really important because it's on the blockchain. So if you click this, 
that means that now when I purchase this, I have, you know, copyright, uh, you know, enabled essentially where there's a, 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 a traceable path of transfer of copyright that you can verify on the blockchain and say, hey, this NFT was sold on this date and this person had copyright usage, they use it the next day. Therefore, you know, if you're ever in court for whatever reason, you can use this to verify, um, you know, your side of things. Uh, and then an auction system, right? So maybe I'm gonna do this for five bucks, start the auction at 125, do it for 12 hours. And, uh, oh, I don't have an image, I only have a 3D file. So let me go back and throw an image up here. Does, uh, like that, it says it's a video. Is that like the 3D viewer video? Well, no, so that's just a preview image. Obviously we can't preview the 3D image here. I mean, we could, um, but it would just be like either really small or too big. So uh, we just put a placeholder right there for that it's a media file. Uh, because just you'll you'll see it on the next page, um, and it shows you that if it's a GLB, if it's any other file format, uh, then hey, look, we just found a bug. It wants me to sign two thousand messages because we did batch maintain and we went back. So mm -hmm. uh, let's see if it asks me. No, it doesn't. Okay, so it's just a, a typo in the in the, the UI. Okay, cool. Um, but it looks like that also prevented us from uh, seeing the confirmation page because it thinks that we still have. 1900, <laughs> 1900 other items to sign. So, uh, okay, I'll have to fix that when we get off uh, the call. But that's why, you know, this is, we got 14 days and so that's the best part. So let's go look and see, uh, see it on the, when we're browsing. It should be up, should be ready. And uh, I hope so. Um, so here is the 3D file, right? We just printed this. And this was the image I, I put on, right? And there's also the 3D file, which is loading. And here it is. So this was the space shuttle that I uh, uploaded, right? And I'm interacting with this. I can, you know, see all this information. Right, that's what I'm talking about. You're, you're manipulating it, right? It's not a pre-rendered video? No, 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 yeah, it's, it's me manipulating this. Like, which, yeah. tell me which way to go, left, right? Spin yeah, it yeah over it's down, like the 3D viewer out. built into like your uh, browser or your your computer, right? That's cool. Right, awesome. and it works on, everything works on mobile, really smooth, right? Um, so, and then look at this item description. So if there's a if there's a YouTube video here, it's going to show you this YouTube video, right? Um, so this is really important because when I'm browsing and this is a Crypto Kitty and there's a hundred other Crypto Kitties that are exactly like my Crypto Kitty, it's just different color fur. What's the story behind this item? Why am I as a buyer going to spend money on this, right? And that's what this is for. It's for you to tell me why, right? And then we got tags, of course, for searching. So if I were to go up here and I typed in 3D, right? My search then it should show my 3D file, right? Because it's the only thing that has 3D in there. So, um, you know, these are all really important uh, UX designs that we've, we've kind of done so that it's very familiar for a buyer. This is like a normal e-commerce platform, right? Um, you want our bids, works the same as eBay. So, you know, you go through, place your bid uh, and that's it. Once the bidding's over, you'll get an email and you'll have a few days to pay. Um, so you see now I'm the highest bidder and there's a buy now price. If someone wants to come in and buy it, they can. Um, so, you know, see, this is all. Is, I was just going to comment on everything in a dollar value and not ETH. That's a, a conscious decision, right? Right. That's yeah, just, correct. Again, to appeal to a more mass market, I would, I would assume. Right. right. But but we also, whenever you actually do anything, uh, we do display the ETH price, uh, you know, in, you know, watch. So if I want to buy it, it tells you exactly how many ETH that I want to pay, right? Um, and it also tells you the current price of ETH, so you can, you know, that's up to date. And when you list an item for sale, same thing. It will show you the current price of ETH and how much ETH is actually being put. So if I want to price something at 5 Ether, then I can just put it whatever the USD value is until it says 5 Ether here. And then you'll be able to do that, right? Um, so another big thing that other NFT marketplaces don't have is messages. Maybe I have a question about this, right? You can't send anyone a message on OpenSea. Most of it's just an address anyways. There's no account. Um, but here I can go ahead and I can send a message to this person, right? To the seller with Spader, which is actually myself. But I can say, hey, about that 3D file, right? And, um, you know, that's that allows, enables a... Uh, means of communication between the buyer and the seller, again, to increase your chance of selling your NFT, which is really important. That's kind of the whole premise here is we're trying to make it more lucrative yeah. for NFT sellers, traders, collectors to be able to actually profit and sell 
those NFTs. Uh, last thing that I do want to show off is another means to get yourself uh, kind of ahead in the game, which is your ad manager, right? So I have an ad balance right now of $21. So I can go through and I can say, hey, where's that 3D file at right here? I want to, I want to promote this ad. I want to promote it for a week. And I'm going to put 20 bucks on it, right? And I can set my cost per click so that every time, you know, when ads are shown and like listings are, are being calculated for which to show, it goes based off of whichever one's the highest click, right? So the suggested rate is seven cents, but I can go way above that, right? And I can set that to say 90 cents. And that means my ad will always be shown. Um, but let's just set it a little bit, a little bit above. So let's just do 10. Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and pay. I don't need to pay anything because I already had an ad balance here. So that's done. My ad has been promoted, this 3D file. And you know, if I go back and I go to the homepage, what do we see right here uh, if it will load? Um, maybe not, maybe it won't load. Still in progress. So uh, yeah, here it is, nice. 3D file, right? So this is that, that NFT uh, that I just promoted. This is on the front page for everyone to see and it's all dynamic. So if someone comes out, buys it, it goes away and they can promote it on their own website. I mean, on their own uh, account, they can choose to promote it to resell it for a higher value. And then finally, when you go to the browse page, Look at what's the first thing that comes up, the highest one. It's boosted down here in the bottom. CS yes, is boosted, so that's how you can tell. Uh, and it comes up first on your search results. Um, so these are important things so that you as a seller can stand out. You can sell your NFTs. You're not going to get lost with the hundreds of thousand other crypto keys that you're trying to sell, but instead, you know, yours can be the first one that people see, which again, conversions. This is what e-commerce does for every e-commerce platform. Why aren't we doing this for the NFT space? So... The advertising is only internally on Mintable. Is there, are you planning on expanding to? Well, um, potentially it's not in the roadmap actually. Um, we're kind of keeping it on, um, on Mintable right now. We're not like Amazon, so we don't have a network of affiliates that you know we can put it all on, mm -hmm. uh, on their websites and stuff. Um, but we do offer pro services and pro services allows for you to get like mentions in a newsletter, to uh, get like a social media blast across all of our social media channels to promote your stuff. And then also the top tier is an actual press release. So like a real press release that goes out to like hundreds of different uh, news agencies and news websites. Um, and it will be crafted by like our press release marketing team. Uh, and they will talk about your NFT, your store, you know, your creation and why it's kind of a big deal um, to get more eyes on it. So one of the ads, the top, one of the top ads we've had on our Zillica platform for the Zillica blockchain, uh, which has been live for a few months now, um, they have promoted their ad, uh, I think maybe 50 bucks, if that, and they've got over 20,000 views on their NFT, right? Which is, that's huge. If you think about that, like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's, really, it's really cheap. Yeah, well, because, you know, the, the cost per click is like quite low. Um, and these are views, not clicks as well. Like these are impressions. Um, but still, getting getting that many impressions on on an NFT when the NFT space is so small is is a big deal, right? Uh, and that's a really good way for that person to sell that NFT. Uh, and so these are all uh, kind of like key features that we wanted to build into a, a platform so that people realize, like, hey, you know, I can um, I can stand out with my creations where I can't do that on other NFT marketplaces. That's been a big thing stopping me. Is that I just feel like I'm just throwing it in the wind, you know, like how are people going to find this and where, you know, because there's just so much stuff, you know, and unless you have someone promoting it directly, or like you said, a direct link, shilling it constantly, you know, you're not going to get many views on it. Right. So that's cool. Right. <laughs> yeah. And we, I didn't really talk about the DAO, but every transaction you do, like I, I, I submitted that transaction, right. Uh, I actually got votes in my wallet. So I got a, if I, I already have an NFT, but if I don't have one, I'll get a new NFT. Um, so I'll get two NFTs, the one I bought in my votes. Um, and that NFT is called Mint and it has votes on it that you can use on our DAO, which you can propose the direction of our platform. You can approve special contracts and artwork to be listed uh, like on a, a proof list, which gives double the votes. Um, and you can really propose anything. If you want us to change our name, change our logo, make a new feature, uh, if you want to change our contract fees, if you want to make it where you can withdraw from our contracts yourself, you know, anything can be voted on. Is um, so that 
you have a personalized NFT for like I had one for myself and say I build up like, uh, you know, 10,000 votes, I could sell the 10,000 votes to someone else. Yeah, yeah. It's a normal NFT. You can just trade it like you would a CryptoKitty and Axie or any other NFT. You can even split it. So maybe you don't want to sell all 10,000. You only want to sell 100 or 5,000. You can split it. So you'll have two NFTs, one with 5,000, another with the 5,000. You can sell one of them. Won't that set up for like that kind of whale fuckery, you know, that happens with no yeah, with ERC-20s? You know, like some guy just goes and buys all the votes and then crashes the system or something, you know, like. No, and that's actually, that's one of the beauty things, like the beautiful things behind using NFTs for DAO is there's no pump and dumps. You don't have to ever worry about like seeing a chart where it just price plummets, right? Because that's not how NFTs work. Right. NFTs well, are individual. Right. I wasn't talking about the price, more, more so about just the voting power, right? So if there was a will and he just wanted to get all the voting power to pass some crazy uh, proposal, he could just go buy all, all the votes from a bunch of people, right? And then yeah, pass you, his you, own proposal. You had enough votes. Yeah, you technically could. So it's a normal DAO, so you need a quorum, right? So a quorum is like a percentage of, uh, you know, all the circulating votes need to be, um, you know, voted for yes or no on this vote in order for it to pass. Um, but one of the things is it's a financial, uh, it's, it's financial game theory. It's the same for attacking a network for like Ethereum 2.0. In order to do that, in order for a will to play those games, they would have to spend millions of dollars to buy all those mm -hmm. votes. And then anything they do malicious would, you know, essentially destroy those millions of dollars they just spent, right? right. So, um, well, it technically could happen, and it could happen with almost any uh, DAO. Right from Moloch DAO, you can deposit millions of dollars into it and become the leading investor. To Uniswap DAO, where you can buy all the Uni and then propose anything you want, or any other DeFi uh, DAO, you can do the same for. Um, and yes, that, that's why I brought it up. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the downsides of. So it's 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 not impossible to NFT DAOs, but it's slightly harder because if I go on Uniswap and I just clear out the entire order book essentially and just place a, a million dollar buy i can buy all the votes right well maybe slippage will stop me but if you go on a centralized exchange you can clear out the order book right but you can't do that with nfts as easily with nfts you have to go on OpenSea or mintable or rareable find every nft make an offer place a bid you know submit that transaction you buy one and that was only 100 votes right now you got to do that another ten thousand times to get you know a million votes um so it is a little bit more of a pain to do this which i think probably discourages you're not going to have a bot that's doing a you know market making or anything like that in this sense and that's one of the key kind of selling points is that speculators are removed from our dao right our dao isn't ran by like moon boys who are only in it for 10x and then don't participate that's a problem with DAOs we have right now is that there's a lack of participation because most of the people are speculators who are investing whereas with our dao there is no speculation because it's not on a order book where you're going to be trading the charts or anything like that. Each item is unique based off of its voting number. So maybe you have 10 votes and maybe you have a million votes. Whoever buys that NFT is going to dictate the value. There's not like a, a current market value, right? Like, I mean, there's a current market value. You can assume, oh, the last one sold for this. So therefore this should be around that price. Uh, but, you know, anyone can go in and say, hey, I'm going to buy one vote for a million dollars from you. Or they can say, hey, I'm going to buy it for 10 cents. Right, that's how an NFT works. Um, so we think that that's a huge game changer for participation, where you're going to see a lot higher participation in our DAO than other DAOs, which are led by speculation. It's almost like a utility token. It's actually got a use case. Amazing. Yeah. Brilliant. I call it a membership. I call it a membership card, not a token. Membership card right. for uh, legal reasons. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. That's a joke. Any, oh, uh, about legal, I was going to ask you, do you have to do KYC to get on the platform? Sorry, Sean. So no, you don't need to do KYC to be on Mintable. Um, if you want to buy a vote directly from our smart contract, sadly, uh, Americans and Singaporeans are not allowed. Um, just just uh, out of concern for future legislation and, and laws and stuff like that. Not because there's anything that says you can't. It's just we don't want like the SEC coming down, you know, knocking on our door. Um, so... There is no KYC. It's just like, uh, you know, on Etsy, you don't really have to do KYC. Uh, you put in your information to, to receive your item though, uh, but you're not going to be uploading your passport or anything like that on Mintable. Cool. Stefano, any uh, questions or comments? Sure. 
Um, so you, you mentioned like when you were showing the, the demo that the user can decide the, the server to use to store like the file. Um, if they choose to go with you, uh, how decentralized is that? What are the risk mitigation in the sense of like, if uh, I don't know, tomorrow, finger crossed is not going to happen. Obviously, you all go to jail and the website goes down and, you know, the classic path on, on that. How distributed is the, the server? Right. We get that question a lot. We've gotten it for years, actually, you know, because we've been around since 2018. And we get that question a lot. One of the things is when we launched in 2018, we put up a 10 year guarantee for your metadata, your content, your files is stored on our server. Right. So there's a 10 year guarantee. So if we shut down tomorrow, it's actually like really cheap to store like metadata and files and stuff. So it's like three cents a gigabyte. And um, for, you know, metadata, it's just text. So it's like $3 a month total. So that's going to be up for 10 years, even if we shut down tomorrow. Uh, it's not decentralized if you're hosting on our servers, of course, right? You can't do private files on a decentralized file storage system. So IPFS, Filecoin, Saya, um, Arweave, you just can't do private files. You can do encrypted files, but the means to transfer the encryption key to decrypt that file is again, centralized. There's no decentralized way to do private files. So when you're doing anything on our servers, of course, it's not decentralized in that sense, but that's why we offer you IPFS or your other server. If you want to host on your own server, you can even put Arweave in there or SciPoint or Filecoin, right? If you have a link for that server that you, you know, you can store your data on. So we offer the flexibility to do completely decentralized if you want to, or if you just want something easy, then you can go with us in our option, right? Um, also for anything that's stored on our servers, we don't have access to it. It's actually double encrypted, right? So we use AES-256 encryption. So that's, you know, military grade encryption. Uh, and we couldn't access it. Like I, you know, I'm the, I'm the main developer. If I wanted to go look at the file that I just uploaded that 3d file, I can't, I can't look at it. I can't open it. I can't access it. Right. So the only way you can access it is when you verify that you're the owner of that NFT with the blockchain. Right. So this is like an important aspect. And when we scan it for a virus, we use special government virus scanning software that is made for classified material, right? So I was in the military, I had a, a security clearance and I, I have, I, I'm familiar with this kind of software. So when we were looking for a solution to scan for viruses, I was like, it's really important that we cannot access the file. You don't want to know what the file is for liability reasons, right? If you're uploading a movie that you don't, you know, you don't have the rights to upload, um, we can't be complicit in that. Uh, but then also privacy. So um, that was really important as well. The, uh, the virus scanning software we use has no, uh, no access to the files either. It can't see the content uh, and neither can we. Uh, and then the files are you know, maintained on our servers for, like I said, a 10 year guarantee uh, if we were to shut doors tomorrow. So on the, on the opposite side, let's assume that I create an NFT and I use my own server to, uh, I don't know, upload uh, a song. I put that on the website, I put that on sales for, I don't know, five bucks, uh, probably a bit cheap, but whatever. Um, I take down the server because I can do that because it's my server. Uh, what happens to the NFT at that point? It's the same as any situation, right? If, um, if, Axie, if, if Axie Infinity went offline tomorrow, right? All the NFTs would be gone. Same for Gods Unchained. Um, there's, there's, you know, there's a few NFTs actually that have done this. Um, there's some that have been rug pulls where they've just deleted everything, right? Uh, and then there's some that, you know, that just the project died, right? So, um, and the data is gone and the NFT is broken, right? It doesn't have an image. It doesn't have any of the metadata anymore. So there's nothing like, you know, we can't stop you. We can't force you to keep your data online. Um, but this is, you know, this is kind of our selling point is that we're providing you the flexibility. If you're a big project and you want to use this system, you want to have batch maintained or, you know, you just don't have a developer to make your NFT, you can still use your WordPress website to host all the data for your blockchain, you know, asset. Um, and if you want to, you could. And if you're malicious with it, then there's really nothing we can do, right? That's just kind of how blockchain works is, um, you know, it's just the nature of the game. That's fair. So the, the best uh, example in like use case would be to like purchase the NFT, download the original file and store that locally in case of like something bad happens. Just, uh, I mean, I assume that you as a company obviously are a little bit more secure than 
me random anonymous individual uploading something on uh, i don't know a completely random server and taking that down like maybe tomorrow or something like that but uh yeah it's a it's a good like practice and and so on on um on the other side because like while you were like presenting all the use cases uh, not the use cases but like the demo and so on um i thought about like the the business aspects in the sense of like the the traditional word and using that as like a possible uh business implication on that and i was actually going like on the music side aspects so let's assume that like i'm a user i'm creating a song i upload that on the nfts i give the copyrights um on the the auction or on the sales and then sean arrives on the website purchase that song that nfts that represent the song and he has the the copyright with that two questions one can sean at that point download the file and for example upload that on spotify and start kind of like making an income out of that um and so that opens up on potentially also like on investments or different industries as well and that will work also on youtube i assume and so on and number two if i'm giving the copyrights to the song and i have already uploaded that on spotify before do you guys help in somehow to actually like make those copyright claims or is that solely to the person that buys the copyrights and the nfts to to figure out all of that Okay, good question. So on the first one, um, when you get the copyright transfer right now, we just do a very simple commercial copyright transfer. So you as the seller will basically be able to provide any description uh, within like your, your, your NFT's description or data um, that says what they can or cannot do with that, that copyright, right? Later down the road, we're going to be implementing a uh, ability for you to select kind of from a drop down of which kind of copyright, wh how much, um, you know, are you going to give them? What is the scope of the, you know, the, their ability to use this commercially? Um, and then, you know, you'll be able to have a little bit finer grain that's going to be more uh, integrated with the site. So it's shown uh, very clearly. Um, but for now, in the beginning, you're just going to provide the, the information just like when you're on Fiverr um, and they say what you can or cannot do whenever you buy their, their images or, or whatever graphics you're buying from that, that, that service. Um, for the second thing is, uh, I, I, let me just clarify your question. You asked if we're going to help uh, in a, in a court situation in terms of proving the, was that well, right? No, 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 not exactly that, because like that, I know it's a little bit uh, complicated. Um, what I meant is more like if there are tools to help the the buyer of that NFT to catch a possible copyright violation if someone else is using the NFTs. And sorry for the plane that it's passing on, on top of me, by the way. So apologies for that. Um, it's okay. <laughs> But yeah, if somehow like, because we had that conversation before with uh, with other artists and uh, and so on. Like, let's assume that I put that song in um, or a video or whatever it is, and me as a user just go on the website, purchase that, and Sean goes to the website, copy exactly that song, and start using that illegally on fifty five different websites. Is there a way that I can actually like track that, understand, or figure out if someone is doing that? Yes and no. So one, um, he won't be able to go to the website and just download your song. He's going to have to buy it, right, in order to get access to that file. So that's an important distinction. Right now, on other marketplaces where you have any kind of file, you it's just public, right? It's on IPFS or Arweave, and you can just download it directly. You don't have to buy the NFT, and then I can go do what you said. Um, so with Mintable, you will have to purchase it first. But then, say you purchase it, it's five bucks. And now you go use it on 55 other websites, right? So there's nothing that we will inherently provide you. We're not going to provide you any kind of service or software that's going to say, hey, your file is used on YouTube. Did you approve this, right? We're not going to do that. Um, we, we just can't do that. That's just, you know, there's, there's multi-billion dollar companies out there that they have trouble doing that. You know, it's called DRM, digital rights management, protecting that their, their, their content is, you know, handled properly. Um, so we're not able to do that. Now, we will help if there is a situation where you're asking for clarification or someone reaches out to us and says, Hey, you know, I saw this, is this copyright, um, you know, enabled in the sense, are they allowed to be doing this? And we can say yes or no, 
based off of you know the records on the blockchain. And this is kind of the, the the maybe aspect to your question was you do have the ability to say there's only been one person who bought this NFT, right? It was Sean. Sean bought that NFT last week. Now it's on YouTube. Who do you think put it on YouTube, right? So you can you can you can do that now because it's on the blockchain. So you have that ability. So there is a benefit to blockchain and files being connected is because you can now do something like that and have a traceability aspect. Um, but it gets a little complicated if you make say 2000 of those songs, you know, and now one of them ends up on YouTube, you don't know which of the 2000 people put it up there, but you do know that it's one out of those 2000, right? Or at least one of those 2000 did something that they weren't, they weren't supposed to do, like give the song away. Um, so uh, the problem isn't solved 100%. Uh, there's really no good, good way to solve this problem of preventing your file from being used. Um, but uh, it does provide an extra step where you can use the blockchain as a tool to verify some things. Okay, got it. Uh, yeah, that's, don't have any other question. Overall, uh, to be honest, like the, the option of having like bigger files as the example of like buying a song from like a new artist or even like for youtubers obviously because it's the biggest platform but in general like new channels that might actually like push the first few videos uh up for sales to so, like you know do a sort of like fundraising or crowdfunding type of things and like give like the ownership of those videos to the community um overall as as a concept as like a business model uh it's it's super cool like um i would actually use that if there are like artists that are putting like songs there and I can purchase and own them. And then obviously trying to monetize that on platforms like Spotify and so on. Um, ideally, yeah, I think that you guys are into something there. Yeah, I think that's an important aspect. One of the things that most people don't recognize when they when, when you know we talk about this is that you're actually enabling the ability to trade files. So right now you trade NFTs and you say, hey, I bought this crypto kitty. Next week I'm going to sell it for double the money, right? But... Now you can actually say, hey, I bought this, artist, uh, this artist's new single and I'm going to trade that next week for double the money. And so people are going to say, hey, I want that single. There's only 100 of them. So I'm going, to, I'm going to pay the premium, right? And so you have that ability to trade a file now where you're going to jump on a file, not for the, the, the NFT itself, but for the, the stuff behind the NFT, the file, the utility behind it. That's Mr. Cool. Gonzo, how do you personally see yourself using Mintable? Uh, and what options uh, for, for what we've done so far on, on the show with the other projects we've got that, that obviously include uh, NFTs? Do, what, what use cases are you seeing here, both individually as a content creator and from a, uh, a business point of view from, from what we're doing on the show? Lots of options, you know, like we've talked about doing a documentary, right? Like it would be kind of cool if you could mint a movie, right? And it's only a You can. Time. Yeah, like I, I totally know you can. I mean, I see in the, in the long term what I used to like make, you know, animation and commercials and all that stuff. And I can see where blockchain is going with that, you know, so, so each person that's worked on it gets a fraction. Uh, the writer gets uh, 5%, the director gets 10%, and then that NFT gets sold. And all those royalties go back directly to the people that are involved working on it, right? The DRM stuff that you're talking about, like I've been getting into that stuff because as an animation artist, we're like the bottom of the ladder as far as like creative rights go. You know, it's like Aww. there's an army. I'm serious, man. You get an army of like 50 animators working on a TV series and you get like uh, 50 in the credits, right? And most of those go by like, <laughs> like that. You know, there's only like three that actually get a screen, you know? So, you know, that, you know, making content like a documentary and, and minting, you know, each, uh, and then if we were talking about um, some of the shareholders of uh, of the brand, you know, being cut into some of those royalties, um, obviously that's not right now, but just like long term. But I mean, everything that you're talking about on on Mintable right now that's coming out at the end of the month is stuff that you know I've one time or another wished you know like bigger file size, uh, being able to do uh, you know two thousand at a time, you know with in like different instead of just like okay they're all exactly the same okay uh sorry my my daughter just distracted me there <laughs> um but i think yeah i mean just making stuff 
and being able to share it with people and like, you know, um, attaching our brand to it. And yeah, I think there's lots of use cases for it. Um, doing commissions, one of kinds, you know, I've even started doing that where someone will commission me and then we'll make five, right? And then we can do slight variations on them. Uh, you know, the guy getting the commission will get a couple, I'll get a couple and then just splitting the revenues on some of them, doing a one of a kind and then splitting the revenue two ways, right? Well, Zach, I mean, you know, the, you, you probably talk, you're probably talking to uh, to a bunch of guys who, who really can use uh, what, what you've created there uh, and, and demonstrate some practical examples in the, in the coming weeks for sure. I mean, we've, as uh, Johnny just mentioned, you know, we've created documentaries, we've uh, in, NFTs, lo lots of different things amongst, uh, you know, the group of people involved in, in hard forking and individually. So we're certainly going to go through a very practical example for, uh, for the audience in, in the coming weeks and show them uh, what we're going to use Mintable for. What's your, what's the competitive landscape for, for you guys? And, and what's the, uh, the real problem you think you're, you're solving uh, in, in the wider sort of macro area of what you, what you're doing? You know, I hope you guys are using Mintable when it comes out. I would love to have you guys on there. And uh, I really, I really hope that like, you know, after this, we, we get together, you know, figure out the best way for you guys to make your content. We'll help you out. Uh, we actually have a power seller program. Um, and you guys would feel like right into the power seller program, right? These are power sellers on our platform, people that, you know, they have really high quality content. Um, and so that'd be something that you guys definitely should, uh, should, should get on. And uh, I'll jot your names down, and <laughs> put you in there. Uh, so the, the competitive landscape and what we're improving, you know, we, I've kind of touched on all this already. Um, there's just, uh, there's a lot that we're putting out. Um, but I think overall, the key is to build a better NFT marketplace that, that is user-friendly. Like when I say user-friendly, I mean a non-crypto person user-friendly, right? Uh, and that has features that is just kind of required to, to make an online transaction, right? You need to be able to have messaging. You need to be able to promote yourself. You need to be able to have you know, the flexibility to put anything you want for your title, description, images, right? Uh, and then, you know, behind all that, you're still selling a crypto kitty. So you need to have that, that flexibility. And, uh, you know, I've been in the NFT space uh, pretty much like since I got started, right? I saw CryptoPunks come out. I was the first person to make money on CryptoKitties. I made Mintable later that year. Um, and just, um, I've seen a lot of the issues that we have, the problems that we're facing. I hear a lot of people, you know, we have thousands of users and that from our 2018 forward uh, version of our app, right? And those users, they always reach out and say, hey, you need to do this or, oh man, this is annoying. Like, why does OpenSea do that? Um, can I do this with the NFT? And um, so just we, we listen to all that. We're trying to build something that answers all these pain points for NFTs uh, to push our ecosystem forward. How many people involved cool ones. Uh, with Mintable? We have a team of, I think, six. Six, I have to count. Yeah, six. The coolest feature is being able to view the NFT. Sean experienced that just a week ago. You know, we sent him an NFT and he's like, where is it? I can't even see it. You know, like if you use the MetaMask on a desktop or a laptop, you can't even see the collectible that's in your wallet. It's like, what the fuck? What, what is that? For some reason, it's I on know. the mobile, no problem. But yeah. on the desktop, it's like, what the hell? It doesn't make Why? any sense. I know. I don't, I don't get it either, man. That's, I've like, <laughs> like I've, I've, I've emailed MetaMask. Like we're on the MetaMask. It's like uh, on, their, on, their, on their mobile version. We're on like their, their DAP yeah. store. And I'm just like, hey, why, why, why can't I do this on my on my browser? Yeah. Uh, because you know, you know what percentage of users are using Mintable, right? Like, on, is it desktop or, or mobile? On a normal application, it's heavily mobile, right? On on any normal website, any normal app, it's mostly mobile users. On Mintable, it's 80 percent desktop, right? And that's just that's all crypto essentially. It's most of crypto is done on a desktop. Uh, and get MetaMask, yeah, it has that issue. Um, we have a wallet section actually, which is really cool. It shows all your NFTs, just like MetaMask should, but it doesn't. Uh, and then you can, you know, transfer and sell it and, and do all the stuff you need to do. Are you guys planning on doing sharding similar to Niftex? What they're doing? Niftex? No. No, no, we don't have any plans on that. Okay. No, a few reasons why. Just uh, we're never going to have an ERC twenty, right? So uh, I see. We just right. never going to do, never going to do a DAO or anything. I mean, we're never going to do a, a DAO with an ERC twenty. Uh, we're never going to do an ICO. When we wanted to do our DAO, that's why it took us like a few months to make it. Is we were like, okay, how do we do NFTs for this DAO, not an ERC twenty? 
Um, so we're not gonna do that. And then also I think sharding is a very niche use case for something that's also really niche right now, right? Like NFTs are really niche and crypto is really niche. So we're looking at like, yeah. you know, three levels, three levels deep of, of like people. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know, I, I, I just, I don't, yeah. It's you can cute. break four figures with this video. <laughs> <laughs> that's the addition is. <laughs> uh, so and that's, that's, you know, that's kind of the thing is like, I don't think there's a market. I, I, there's, there's people that use it, sure. But if you look at like globally, if you're going to build a business on something and you only have globally 10,000 people that know about it, like, you know, that's not, it's not really a feasible business. Not yet. Not yet. Right. I, you know, next year it could be huge. Everyone can use everything. <laughs> yeah. Stefano, any uh, closing uh, questions or comments? Um, mm, the only one would be like, cause you, you mentioned like that you have the program for, uh, for content creator and, uh, you're going to launch in, uh, I think a couple of months basically from, from now, end of um, this. Uh? end of this month. Yeah. End of this month. Power okay. Solar sorry. Program. Apologies for that. Um, is there like any sort of like, um, collaboration, big launch things with like some famous content creator or something like that uh how is that launch gonna gonna be and stuff like that basically do you mean like how how is our launch gonna be at the end of the month or how is the launch gonna be if we work with some famous content creator both <laughs> so our launch at the our launch at the end of the month you know we like i just mentioned we never we never did an ico or anything like that so for like two years now i've been self-funding mintable all the money comes out of you know my bank account, my personal bank account. Um, so we don't have that much money. We 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 make a little bit of money here and there, um, but before our marketplace comes out, we don't really have very many business models that are active on you know the current app that we've had for two years. So um, so we're definitely not profitable by any means, um, but hopefully by next year we'll we'll be highly profitable uh, with our marketplace. Um, but with that being said, that means we don't have a lot of money just to blow on marketing, right? So it's not going to be like we raise 50 million in ICO. We're going to go, you know, do a yacht party or anything like that. I wish, but just sadly, we can't do that. Um, so uh, our launch is, it's, it's going to be a launch. It's just going to be, um, you know, like a um, we're going to try really hard, right? We've got, uh, we're going to have a, a video made, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's how big it is. We're gonna hey, have it's a video better made. than nothing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it's, we'll try our best. Um, you know, but I think, I think a lot of the launch is going to be kind of organic over the month afterwards. Where Who's a lot making of people... your video, Zach? You're talking uh, about the best creative agency in all of crypto right here. Oh, really? Really? I don't know. I got no, some. No, it's got... not true. Don't worry. <laughs> really? Who's right better? <laughs> I, I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> Plus. I got, I got a random guy. I don't, um, some Steven, um, Steven like Spielberg. I don't know who he is. Some, just some, <laughs> random, I found him on Fiverr. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> that'd be awesome. No, exactly. it's, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's no one big. It's, you guys are probably, probably do a, a killer video. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll talk. I'll buy you a beer. Well, so, a certainly like this, the fact that you're backing yourself, you know, you're putting your yeah. money where your mouth is, there's no token. Uh, you know, you've, 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 you're operating in the space we know well. So, yeah, I mean, we're certainly interested to follow along and, and, and see how you guys get on. And uh, yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we're clearly going to have to check it out ourselves and, and, and check out the actual use cases over the next few weeks. So and you survived 2018 and 2019, which yeah. is a huge plus. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, never, never, never is... tempting to come up with some silly idea yeah. for a utility token, Zach. Yeah. <laughs> no. And have no, that you your party. <laughs> No, there's a, it's a moral thing, man. It's a moral thing. I don't want, that's why with our DAO, I'm really happy that we remove speculation. I don't want people to lose money buying something where they're, a lot of people in crypto, you know, they're new and they think, oh, this is going to be the next Bitcoin and it's not, right? And they lose a lot of money doing that. And I would hate morally for me to be, yeah. I mean, yeah, just think about it. I would hate to, to be the guy behind that project who's got, you know, thousands of people that have lost money because they thought they, this coin was going to go to the, you know, a hundred X or whatever. It's just, it's just, I don't know how people sleep at night when they do stuff like that. So that's why we're never going to have an ERC 20. Uh, we've actually turned down 
like $15 million to do an ICO. Um, so we're just not on the roadmap, never going to happen. Zach, I didn't Very know good. this on the platform, but do you guys have a commission structure? Yeah. So oh, every exactly. time, uh, every time a uh, NFT is sold, it's like uh, one to two percent. It's variable. So sometimes we'll change it um, and say, uh, you know, it's like no fee weekend, like no fees, right? Um, but it's it'll be around two percent. Yeah. Um, and then you know, like the advertising, that's that's a big thing for us, right? So that's going to give us a lot of money when people are promoting their listings. That's going to be what's going to be helping us out. Uh, and then like batch minting, that's how we make our money now. Um, with the Mintable app that's been out, we've always charged a one-time fee to unlock batch minting on your contract, right? So it's, if you want to batch mint 40 tokens, it's $40. You pay it one time, and then for life, your smart contract can make 40 tokens in a single transaction, right? So we're doing the same exact thing, uh, except it goes to 2000 now, and it's only $99, right? So we give you 50 for free, and then if you want more, you know, you can just pay a little bit more, uh, and you can do 2000 tokens. And it's that's pretty fair to be honest, because, you know, if you're going to make 2000 NFTs, you're probably going to make more than a hundred dollars selling them. Right. No doubt. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty much um, how we, we support ourselves. Cool. cool. Right, guys, well, we're, uh, we've come up uh, well over an hour here. Um, look, we, we look forward to uh, checking it out, Zach, uh, over the coming weeks. And we'll, we'll certainly have you, uh, you back on maybe just after the launch as well to, talk us through how it's all gone but uh yeah, yeah any, any, any final uh comments or questions from you uh, mr gonzo <laughs> that'd be a no he's frozen <laughs> <laughs> there's an yeah, nft right there you were talking about doing with didi and Vessa. oh no uh, i'm here i'm here i'm here <laughs> <laughs> it's too nft hello Okay. No. Hello. Sorry, mate. No, we're, we're cutting Hello? you. Hello. Oh, there we go. He's <laughs> back. All right. Final comments from you, Mr. Gonzo. Total crash. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we got you. We just, we just see you. Yeah. Yeah. Just good, really mate. Good. Far, far away. Clo yeah, I was going to say the. the Specifically, no, 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 you, 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 you're out, you're out. Vest, the Vesa DD one. <laughs> that big cock again. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? Uh, yeah. Someone, someone just started watching a movie next door and you're uh, you're building them. I'm afraid. You, you, really? Yeah. 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 Totally frozen? No, Can't no, you're me? good now, actually. Okay, last oh. chance. Third time lucky. The last, DD, last, last shut up. The DD and the Vesta token we can make on Mintable because it's big, right? Because Vesta's painting is giant, right? And we want to put animation on it. So having the three gig limit is perfect. And then uh, another part of the team, Jesse, he makes music. So the music, the animation, the giant painting with all the details, it'd be an excellent showcase for our work and for your platform. Show, showcase a lot of the features. So yeah. specifically, that would be a good thing, I think. Okay. And I know Definitely Vesta will be super excited about this. All the true, extra true, true. features you were talking about. So, All right, Zach. Listen, thanks very much for uh, for joining us. Uh, it'd be great to catch up with you in, in, in person, maybe in the next couple of weeks as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah, real, real, real pleasure. It's obviously a, an extremely exciting space. And hats off to you, mate. You know, someone who's also put my own money into four years of, uh, of of something in the crypto space without a token um <laughs> good on you good yeah. on you man good exactly on you. so uh yeah it'll be great great to meet you and we'll, we'll certainly be tracking your your progress so uh, very closely and and checking out the utility with uh, with what we're doing as well along the way so thanks mate we'll uh we'll, we'll speak soon and uh, stefano and, and johnny thanks very much for uh for joining again guys we'll uh, we'll see you all very soon thank you bye thanks everyone bye Right out.